Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane, a digital audio school down in Montpellier, France, an Ableton certified training center. In this series of tutorials, we're learning how to use the Max for Live devices that got revamped with Live 10. We've already looked at LFO and Envelope. It is now time to look at a brand new tool that got introduced recently. It's called Shaper. So in order to demonstrate Shaper, this brand new Max for Live device, I'm going to use the same musical example I used in the two previous tutorials of this series. Remember, we learned how to use LFO from Max for Live. This modulator can be used anywhere within the platform and we used it to modulate the sync on two oscillators within analog to modulate the texture of the sound. And we also used Envelope and learned how to use Envelope, another modulator, to make the detune of the two oscillators move in sync and in opposite directions. And the sound we got from these experiences was that. So you can see the detune moving in opposite direction. You can also hear the sync here. You can hear both these effects. The texture is lively. However, it's still quite continuous and quite boring. So that's where the shaper comes into play. You've probably used, or some of you have probably used the LFO tool from Xfair Records. Great tool that has an integrated filter and multiple graphs we can use to modulate to make these parameters move. Well, that's what the shaper does. Does, but it's slightly more potent. Uh, let's go to our Max for Life tab and write Shaper. We'll find it in the Max Audio Effects. I'm going to load it behind the LFO here. Here goes Shaper. As its name implies, it has different shapes. At the moment, I've used the classic sort of a triangle with a slight inclinated slope. And I'm going to map this to absolutely whatever I want in Ableton Live. So instead of doing it on a fader like the last tutorials, I'm going to do it on the frequency of the sound. And you're going to now see and you can hear the movement I'm creating inside that sound. Now, I'm going to make this movement faster with the rate. Or slower, sorry. <laughs> now that it's slower, I'm going to now implement more movement, creating multiple points into my graph. I can bend the curves using the ALT button to create the perfect movement. At the moment, the dots here, the, the breakpoints, are snapping to the grid. I can add more grid if I want more control. And that will also help with quantization. Sometimes I've got trouble getting the dots. You see how much control I've got over the movement of that filter now? Yeah, I can reset everything with the cross here. And you can see the curve being written here in real time, yeah? Yeah, how interesting is that? Now, I can change the start point of the modulation using the phase button, just like on an LFO, which means I can start at different points of the curve, yeah? And I can also now modulate the depth of the movement, so how wide the range of the movement will be. At its widest, you see, the frequency moves pretty wild. Like so. And I can now set that slightly narrower. I see the movement is narrowed. I can now change the central point of the modulation using the offset and place the movement exactly where I want it to be. I can jitter the movement using the jitter button, making it move erratically. I can smooth that movement with the smooth button next to it. So that's pretty simple to understand, pretty simple to demonstrate as well. Now these um, slopes and these shapes here are just the starting point. Obviously you can add as many breakpoints as you want into your automations, as simple as that. And as you probably know, with this logo here, I can assign the same movement to eight different destinations. So maybe I can, I don't know, assign it to the pan. And we're going to have a different movement on the pan and the frequency. If I adjust the values here, you see.
slight movement only. Let's make it a little bigger. There you go. So you can see now both movements are slightly different. How great is that? Amazing these technologies, yeah? It's like modular world all over again, yeah? I can basically shape the movement of anything I want in live using this shaper. Brand new tool on Live 10. It was about time we get one of these. Yeah, so I see you on the next tutorial of this series on the new Max for Live devices where we'll look at expression control, which has been slightly revamped.